happens oh, after your the, the after. Oh. <laughs> you, you, got, you got a minute? Uh, quickly. Good. I was just thinking of you like this past week and I was like, really? wow, that guy is so cool. He's such a blessing. Because when you were um, I don't know, in dream ministry and I was like, oh, I have a lot of stuff for him. You're awesome. And he Take it off. I'm a young tributor. So you try to.
Hello. Hello world. This is me. I am Thomas and I'm beautiful. A daughter of the king. You can carry. Echo, 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 echo. Where is it? Hello? Hello. Awesome. All right, so everyone get settled in a little bit. Um, Jennifer just wanted to let you guys know she's in first year right now. Um, Let's really hope that's not going to happen. We're just going to declare that that's not going to happen. Um, Ahem, ahem, I think we're back and rolling. So if I could get your attention again, you guys, this next announcement you do not want to miss. There is, wait for it, brownies in the corner. I know, you're glad you're listening, right? So there's brownies. Um, I believe they're made from Jennifer, um, the lovely Miss Jennifer. Um, so we can thank her for that when we see her. But please feel free to, I'm assuming they're open for, for grabs right now. Before we start, is this true? Um, yeah, so I welcome you. Go ahead, grab a brownie, after lunch, snack. He's going for it. He's diving in. Good job, Brad. Um, also, we have three amazing people who are coming up, and as soon as they get up here, we would love to give them the biggest round of welcome that we can, because we know how to do honor here, because we've been honored and loved by the Lord. Um, so we would love just to give back to these people. So if I could have Miles and Brad and Tom, we just would love to honor you guys. And we are just going to um, have them talk a little bit about their second year experience or after their second year. Um, so if we could just like extend a hand really fast and just like pray a blessing over their time here <laughs> um, and their talk. So take it away. I'll start, I guess. Um, God, we just um, come before you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We just say that you have full reign here. Um, God, and we just honor these men before us. And we thank you, Lord, for how they've paved the way, um, like trailblazers. Lord, that we just get to um, follow back in, um, back behind them and see um, what we can learn from what they've what they've gleaned from you, Jesus. Um, and we just say a fire on their words, Lord, and a fire in our hearts to receive. God, we are hungry, Lord, that we would um, receive exactly what you want from us today. God, we thank you that their words are going to be um, words of weight, um, that they're going to be um, straight from your heart. God, we just thank you for wisdom. And, um, yeah, your Holy Spirit leading well today. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, bless you. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to start off for a little bit. I'm just going to talk for a little bit, and then I'm going to have them sort of join me, and we're going to sort of Q&A it up for a little bit and, and muse on a few other things. Um, thanks for letting us join you all. It's sort of fun to be here. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, the, the idea is sort of like life after year two is what we're going to talk a little bit about because, um, well... 
we know something a little bit about that. Uh, funny that. There is life after year two. That's where we'll start. How about that? There is life after year two. Um, it's sort of fun. Um, it's different. It's different. Um, and so really, that's, that's partly where I want to go. I want to talk about um, the transition, uh, a little of what that looks like, um, because I think there are, there are a few things that, that maybe I can, I can help a little um, and maybe head off a little bit of, of challenge. Um, because the, it's a very real transition, right? We've moved from two years of a highly structured environment, <laughs> um, which is a really good thing. Um, and then it's, depending on where things look at, it, it may not be so structured for you. It might be, might not. Uh, I don't know what third year will or will not look like or if, as an option or who will or won't do it or what that'll look like. So, so I understand that. And so that's why I'm sort of trying to look at it from the context of life after year two, but it's not necessarily strictly um, life after school. There may or may not be a little bit more. But uh, anyway, that's, that's the gist is, is I want to talk through the nature of transition and, and the journey. Because uh, I, I want to in part put... The, the journey of, of these two years of school um, into the context of the bigger journey. Because I think that actually helps understand what it looks like on the other side. When we realize that these two years are, are not, they weren't the beginning of your journey, and therefore they're not the end of your journey. Uh, they're just a, 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 time, a time frame in, in the middle. Um, and, and for whatever reason, um, for whatever reason, we'll, we'll know it's wisdom because it's from the Lord. In, in processing this and sort of getting ready, I felt like, um, part of the gist is to look at transition in the context of inheritance. Because that's the journey in many ways we're on. We're on this thing. It's, I mean, Peter mentioned it you know, this morning, a little bit last week, and, and some other things. It's sort of a theme running, but um, the context of, of transition in the context of inheritance. Because there's, we're on this journey toward walking into our inheritance, right? Um, we're, we're coming into more. Um, and looking back to the nature of, of the journey of Israel, right, they, had, they came out of Egypt and then they had a season in the wilderness that was still part of the journey. And then they took another transition across the Jordan that eventually led them into um, the land of their inheritance. And even then there was an ongoing, there were seasons of, of uh, really taking out strongholds, going after the other nations that were possessing that land that God had promised them. Like there's these, there's these seasons to it, and this ongoing journey, the ongoing process. And that's really where we're at. So think about inheritance. Um, I don't know, I, what is an inheritance, or, or what do we think about it? We'll try to make this a little bit interactive, just for fun. Um, and because you all are amazing people too, so you don't need just to hear my thoughts. So Holy Spirit is an inheritance. Spirit is an inheritance? Okay. What else about inheritance? Joint heirs with Christ, so what's true of Christ is true for us. That's a good thinking. Yeah, there's a lot to sort of piggyback on that. Our gifts and talents are part of our inheritance, absolutely. Authority is part of our inheritance, absolutely. As sons and daughters of a movement, we inherit the momentum from previous generations. Mm, yeah, sons and daughters of a movement, we inherit uh, the momentum of, of those who have come before us and of, of, the whole, of the whole movement, absolutely. Yeah, there's some good stuff there. Not only are gifts and talents an inheritance, but inheritance itself is a gift. Right? Everything we're getting through inheritance is a gift. That has a really important implication. Amen. Miles and I were talking about this a few weeks ago. You can't earn that. You can't strive for it. And, and that's, that, that's sort of a key. And it's a key in this context of transition because I'm going to tell you, one of the, one of the things we're going to talk through today and I'm sort of going to weave through are some of the lies that the enemy may bring to you once you get through graduation. Because some are going to come. He's going to come at some things. And that's one of my goals today, straight up, is to expose some of those lies ahead of time. So when they come, you can go, wait a minute. I reject that. Um, and so one of those lies is, okay, now it's time for your inheritance. You better get on it and make that happen. <laughs> 
right? And that, that's not going to fly. But we can spend a lot of effort and get really worked up trying to strive into that. And I, so that's, that's one of the keys to, I think, to remember is that this inheritance is, it is a gift uh, to us. Um, related to being sons and daughters, sons and daughters have a father, right? So this inheritance is a gift from our father. And it actually also, and it comes to sons and daughters. That's why. In fact, because of Christ's death um, and his resurrection and then our death and resurrection in him, which is what we symbolize through baptism, right? Um, Because of that second birth, our inheritance is a birthright because that's how inheritances work in the natural. You get an inheritance from your father or your mother and they come to sons and daughters. They don't come to random people, typically, um, in the natural, but in, in a spiritual realm, they absolutely do not. They always come from a father, two sons and daughters. And so I know, we, you know that's, that's a big theme, and, and especially you know, first year, and it comes more established in the second year, we get the sons and daughters, but I still want to remind us of, of this is the nature of inheritance. This is how inheritance happens. This is where it comes from. With that has um, another interesting implication that inheritances always come. Like that's, that's what a good father does. A good father leaves an inheritance. Scripture says, in fact, that even in the natural sense, a father's leave inheritance to his children and his children's children even, which is an interesting thing because it hints about stewardship, right? Inheritances are meant to be stewarded and passed on. This is part of a wealthy mindset. I'm not going to go there a whole lot, but um, that's the nature. Like we, we, we steward something with the expectation that it will be greater when we pass it on to the next generation. And that's even what we're walking into. So what you've gained, even and a natural, again, we tend to think of those on time spans, right? 20, 30 year generations, 80 years, depending on how you sort of want to think about generation. But in this context, there's even a little bit of a reality of even say with any given year of, of school, like really, what I'm hoping to do in part, and it's why it's a privilege to be here, is to take a little bit of what I gain and deposit it into you, and then you can carry that on, right? Like it works in small scale as well as big scale. It's the nature of inheritance. The last thing I want to call out on inheritance, um, it typically comes suddenly. It's a, sort of a, a surprise because we expect to sort of come into it over time, but, but there's a reality of a suddenness, a very quickness, um, to it. And really, I hear that in the, in the prophetic language sometimes through our stream, people talking about suddenlies and that kind of thing, like it's out there, but I think this is a context for some of why it's there. Um, like it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, and then it suddenly is. Because that's how God seems to roll. I mean, honestly, I'll just let it sort of sit at that. But, but I also say that to, to give some hopes, like, well, I don't see how it's evolving. I don't see how it's developing, and it's not, my inheritance isn't I don't see how it's coming to be. I don't feel like I'm on the journey to my inheritance. Nee. Um, it doesn't really matter how we feel about that. Um, we're on the journey toward an inheritance, and, and sometimes it manifests itself suddenly. And, and I think that was even true for, for Israel in a way, right? I mean, after 40 years in the desert, you know, I mean, I, I know that the camp was stirred up and they're getting ready to... You know, okay, we're going to cross the Jordan today. Follow the ark. Okay, that's generally a good idea, by the way. You know, follow God's presence into something. But still, did they really quite know what they were in for? I'll suggest to you not so much, yeah. Um, and very suddenly, just by following the Lord, then their inheritance began to sort of manifest itself in front of it. And of course, God really kick-started that on his terms, meaning the not earned, right, with Jericho. Okay, and so you're just going to walk around some things and I'm going to give you this whole city and then we're going to like set the tone for this whole thing. Um, so that's where we're headed. We're headed toward an inheritance and we have transition to get there. Um, so thinking a little bit earlier about the children of Israel, uh, in the wilderness in fact, in the early time in the wilderness, right? They get out of Egypt, they make it across the, uh, the Red Sea uh, and then after a, a time, um, but I, th- I want to say a year and a half, two years in, somewhere in there, they end up at Mount Sinai. Uh, and this is actually the time when they were given the Ten Commandments. But the interaction between the people of God and God himself at that time was interesting. 
Uh, this is in Exodus, what, around 19. And it's a little bit, little bit depressing uh, in a sense when we look back at it. But in, in Exodus 19, um, oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking a year and a half, two years. It's not. It's the third month after they left Egypt, so super soon. Um, there you are. Um, you know, the, the Lord was wanting to meet with the people, and the people were a bit spooked about it, right? Um, and so picking up in uh, Exodus 19.16, so it came about on the third day when it was morning that there was thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound. So that all the people who were in the camp trembled. That's a biblical phrasing for they were freaked out. Um, right? And, and they sort of get it, and actually it's, wouldn't surprise me thinking about this just right now, that there's probably a chiasm in here. But um, skipping ahead, because you've got this description of being a little bit freaked out, and then we've got the actual delivery of the Ten Commandments. And then jumping right afterward, we've got sort of a return to some of this description of them being freaked out um, in now Exodus 20, um, 18. And following, and all the people perceived the thunder and lightning flashes and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And the people saw it, they trembled and stood at a distance. And they said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but let not God speak to us or we will die. Why am I calling attention to this? Uh, What was God's intention with the people relationally? What was God's relational intention with the people? Yeah, to be in one-on-one relationship, right? He was coming down on the mountain, and all of his glory, lightning and thunder and trumpets and other craziness. Um, <laughs> and yet, that's, I mean, that, was, that was intention, but it's exactly it. Um, they were looking for relationship, and the people rejected it. They said, basically, we're not so sure we want relationship on your terms, um, of course, God will only have it that way. Um, and so they end up, I'll suggest to you in some ways, that was the beginning of what caused their visit in the desert to be, instead of a couple of years, to become 40. Uh, God still got them out of the wilderness. He still got them through a transition. But it took extra long. Because really, there was a generation that didn't want the relationship. And so God waited until their children were maybe open to that relationship. Really, the key is he let one generation pass by until the next generation was ready. Um, And I'm calling attention to this again because of the nature of of the journey we're on. As, As things come out of a couple highly structured years of school, the goal here is relationship. Um, I want to just remind you and encourage you that the goal isn't the inheritance. The goal isn't figuring out what to do with everything you've been given and imparted and have learned over two years. Although that's, I mean, that's a part of it, right? But that's not the end goal. Uh, The goal is inheritance, but the goal most significantly is relationship. And if we get out of that relationship, if we back that off, which is easy enough to do, um then it it actually can delay the inheritance. And that's sort of too bad, really. Um, So I'm offering that, I I said in many ways as a reminder, that's not a condemnation at all, Um, but just as a reminder that, because it's going to look different for some of you. Some of you have a lot of maybe innate structure. It it may not transition. Things may run just fine in this regard. Others like myself, honestly, I'm sort of an unstructured fellow by and large. I like to sort of fly by the seat of my pants, and I honestly prefer life that way. Uh, and that's good, but it, it took still a little bit of an adjustment to say, what does it look like now? Because so much of how I structured my relationship with the Lord for a couple of years in school was driven by the structure of school. It had to be. I don't know how else it wouldn't have been when it was commanding 20, 25 hours of my week for two years straight, right? Um, but it, it needed to look different, and I've had to, to look at that and say, okay, now how does that look? And there's nothing wrong with that transition, it's just the nature of, of the transition. We're gonna, I'll hit on that a little bit more, um, some of the nature of that in a minute. But um, so, so to that end, um, 
The transition from the wilderness to an inheritance, I will remind you and assert, in fact, you're not meant to live in the wilderness forever. And this is going to be another lie that may come up. Okay, you're out of school, you're done with whatever, now we've got a season of wilderness, a season of testing, a season of growing. Nice, nice religious language we can throw to that. Um, and the enemy would love to, to convince you that that needs to last a really long time. And it may need to be for a time. Um, but you don't necessarily need to agree with it needing being longer than what the Lord actually intends. Like there's a time and a season for things. But you're not intended to stay in the wilderness. You are intended to enter your inheritance. There's also, well, let me, let me come to that in a second. The, there is a transition now. It may be from one season of, uh, from school and it may be into a wildernessy type of thing. It may not be. I don't actually want to suggest it has to be. I don't want to, I just don't want to do that. Um, I want to I honor where each one are at because the nature of things looks a little bit different. In fact, I do not expect your journey coming out of, of these two years of school to look quite like the journey for myself or even the others that came out of my class. Because the world's in a different place. God's kingdom is in a different place. So my journey of this sort of third year, functionally, doesn't need, is not necessarily a pattern for yours because of what God's doing in the bigger picture. But nevertheless, there's still a transition for you into something, into whatever. I don't know exactly, right, what, what it looks like. You may not either, but, but there is a transition, and it is now, and there's a sort of a transition uh, put upon you. And so this is the challenge is to, to learn and just be prepared to say, how, what, what, what do I have to do intentionally to, to make this transition, to sort of learn to, to walk with God with, with a different structure or a different environment, to walk with God without this sort of forced community. And I don't say forced in a bad way, but like, sort of automatic, right? I mean, you, sh- you just show up here, or more to the point, mostly you stay after service, right? Have a bite to eat, and you have community. I mean, you've got your legacy groups, you've got this class time, like there's an inherent community here. In fact, that's one of the things you need to hold on to, like prioritize community, because we're meant to walk in community, and yet there's a shift here. There's, the reality is you have a shift here coming in just a, a couple short weeks, really, of how am I going to pursue community without this automatic thing on Sundays and Wednesdays, you know, for some of you as well. Uh, so, so just choose up front to invest the effort to do that. It's actually been a, a privilege and fun this year to begin to, to pursue some extra relations with people, take extra conversations, find time. Miles and I have sort of gotten in the habit of, of grabbing dinner about, I don't know, what, about once a month? Um, and it's just been sort of fun to, to develop and cultivate an aspect of relationship that actually even wasn't there before. I mean, obviously it was developing there, and we were we were roommates throughout Israel, so that was you know sort of probably helped jumpstart some of that actually in a in a way. But but still, it's been interesting to to share that life together, following and, and just pursue that and, and with others too. But you need to choose it. It's not going to happen automatically necessarily. Some of you that's super nat, very natural. I love the word super, but. Um, uh, maybe it almost is. I don't know. That's a, is there such a thing as like a Holy Spirit slip kind of thing? Or like a Freudian slip with a Holy Spirit leaning? I don't know. I'm not sure what that looks like. Anyway, b- 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 plan, plan for it. Like be intentional. Um, and, and that's going to protect you. Part of the goal we journey and we deal with some of the lies is to be in community. There's a, there's a funny reality. When, I, when I'm in a relationship with someone, when I've got a friendship with somebody, whatever, I can see the lies they're believing much more readily than I can see the lies i am believing. And they can see the lies I'm believing much more readily than I can. And it's really helpful to point them out for each other and say, um, hello, because we want to expose that stuff. It's really important.
Let's talk a little on, on the nature of journey, because I said this is, the context is a bigger journey, right? Everything's sort of put together. Your journey was before school. You're still on the journey through here. You'll be on the journey afterward. School is not bring an end, and, and even the terminology of graduation is a little, we want to be a little careful with it, really. Often in the high school or, or college setting, we refer to it as commencement, right? Which is really, in some ways, a slightly better word. Because uh, graduate has this implication of finishing something. And there's an element of truth to that. I mean, you've, you've worked hard at stuff, you've invested for two years, and, and we actually are celebrating with you the completion of that process. And it's, it's a marker, and it's a worthy marker. Just as the nation of Israel regularly raised you know, monuments of stones to remember something, to put a marker down and say, this has happened at this point, and we celebrate that, and that's right and appropriate. But there's a reality of its, its the word commencement is beginning, Right? And, and so we want to just remember things in, in the context of the bigger thing. And that's going to be important, too, because another lie that's going to come against you is this idea of, okay, don't lose it. Oh, you better be careful. You might lose everything you've worked for. You're going to end up back where you were. You're going to end up, you're going to lose everything you spent two years on it and be back. Like, that's, that's going to circulate quite possibly. It certainly did for me. Like, I was saddled with some of that. Like, oh, what am I going to do? I don't know. I don't want to lose all that stuff. And like it gets you focused, one, in a defensive posture, and we want to be offensive in what the Lord has, has for us, for sure. And it's just no place to live because it's, it's, it's obviously not a holy thing. That's not a holy thought. That's an enemy thought, and we just don't need to entertain that stuff. Um, and, and there's not a fear. You're changed. You're irrevocably changed. This journey has, has grown, and furthermore, what, this, what has been planted in, in you and what is sprouted and is growing does not have its full fruit yet, but it will. The fruit of what has happened here in this time, you can see a little now for sure, but I'm saying whatever you see is only a little now. There is much more. There is much more fruit. And the vine is good, and it will bear the fruit. Like, just rest in that. What the Lord has done, he's going to carry through to completion. It's just a given. Stay in relationship with him. It's just going to happen, and you don't have to worry about it. And so you can remember that, and you can, we can just push all those lies aside. Squish them down, squash them, dream like a bug, nasty spider you don't want. That's pretty much what it is. And, said that it's the, journey, and the journey is about relationships, so we maintain it by just saying, I'm just going to stay in relationship with the Lord. I'm just going to stay in relationship with the Lord, Ultimately, the destiny, everything else ahead, will manifest itself. And I know I keep coming back to that as the priority, but it is. Um, as I was, I was sort of reminded in, in, in looking for this, that I'm talking with the Lord a little bit, that like everything related to our destinies, our callings, God will, will rearrange, right? He'll, he'll rearrange things to make it happen. If we take a misstep, whatever, like he'll rearrange to make stuff happen. And in fact... When we're, and sometimes he rearranges it w- within our time. He tries to. Um, but even things get rearranged across generations, right? When we can inherit a generational calling, frankly, it means somebody in the past didn't maybe recognize it or pick that up, but God still has reworked it and still, like, he's going, like, I want that to happen on earth. And so we'll just carry that on. And I'll leave that calling available until someone picks it up. And I'm going to do my best to make that happen. Like, he puts that stuff together. The reason I call attention to this, but there's one piece he can't rework, and that's the relational side. He can't have the relationship with you with someone else. That's not substitutable. That can't move between generations. He can't port that calling because we're each individual and unique. Like that relationship has to happen with each one of us. There's no alternative. And it's actually his top priority. He's more interested in a relationship with us than our destinies and our callings. Again, it gives us permission to not strive and not worry about it. Like, we want to walk into that stuff. But the highest call, the highest goal is actually the relational side. And that's the one thing that if we don't participate with God, there's no replacement. Like, there's literally no replacement. If we won't have that aspect of relationship with him, he simply won't have it. It's just, it's that important. Um, He desires... He desires our destinies. He desires our callings. He wants to make all that happen, but he wants the relationship before everything else. I 
another thought on destinies, because things take time to manifest. Some of it will be quicker, some will not. And looking back even at my own class, some people walked into stuff pretty quickly and some of us are still waiting, mostly. And it's okay. It's okay. Because the goal is relationship. But again, you're going to hear lies there. Like, oh, it's your fault. Oh, your destiny hasn't happened because you sinned. Your destiny hasn't happened because you haven't stepped up to the plate. Good word. Your destiny hasn't happened because you haven't striven enough. You need to work harder at it. You need to be more holy. You need to pray more. You need to, you need to, you need to. And, and your destiny is not happening because you haven't. Or because you did. Either way, right? Um, mm-mm. Mm-mm. And sometimes there are delays even to our destinies that come from outside, right? You can actually be in the right place, and for some other reason, because it involves other people, like life involves other people, right? We, we got that. It's not just us. So other things can happen, and destinies can be delayed. And God will, again, rearrange. We've established that that's, that's viable. But the enemy is still going to try to pin that blame on you. He'd love for you to cooperate and agree with that, too. Sucks to be him. I'm also going to suggest that we get an increase in lies at the end of a wilderness season. It's not just at the beginning. And think about Jesus in his own time of the temptation. He was in the wilderness. When did Satan come to him? At the end. At the end, right before he was going to step into some things. So I just want to leave it out. Like we can can expect and therefore we can be prepared for and be ready for this idea that we may see lies accelerate He's going to come at it for one more renewed attempt. Hey, this is on its way. Let's see if we can blow this up before it actually happens. Right? So we can just sort of expect it. Um, And that's when he's also most tired, let's be honest. I mean, he was weary after, I'd be really weary after 40 days of not eating. Uh I'm weary after 40 hours of not eating. (laughs) Angry, yes. It's possible. Anyway, just, just, just to know. Um, to just sort of to think about that and, and be aware of that. So to so, so take in the coming months, just be prepared to take every thought captive. And again, be prepared to do that alone and be prepared to do that in relationship. And you've spent two years building some deep relationships, right? I mean, legacy group times and everything else. Rely on that. Like that, that is a resource you've been given in a sense. Not that every one of those relationships maintains the same level. It can't, and it's okay, because everything has seasons and, and things come and go, but, but some of it does. Like, so just, just treat literally your relationships with one another, relationships with school leaders, even your relationships between classes, those after and before, to the extent you've interacted. Like, just treat those as relationships. Ask each other the hard questions, and be prepared to do it in the coming months. Like, come about July, great time. How are you doing? No, how are you really doing? No, no, really, really, how are you doing? Seriously. And answer them honestly to each other. And it's easy enough to begin to back off from that relationship when you haven't connected and talked even for as little as a few weeks. Oh, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. No, you're not. I mean, if you are, that's awesome, but... <laughs> right? Like, I, I'm, just, I'm just challenging you because... This, this is what's going to help bring life and, and protect, against, protect against some of, of what the, the enemy is trying to seed and, and trying to, to damage and destroy. So, so what is this time? Um, in, in a really big way, I feel like your two years here is, is an accelerant to the journey. Again, it's not the journey, right? It wasn't the beginning, the end. We said that. It's an accelerant. What's happened here may have been what sitting through Sunday mornings might have been, and just occasional casual other stuff, might have been a 10 or 20 year project. Really. It's a massive accelerant, which is really good news. And it does mean you're going to get to some things that you, you wouldn't, but you're not going to see those for a while. That's interesting. And I say that simply for this. If you had to spend another 20 years growing like you have, 
but you consolidate that into a couple, then by the time you get to the end of your life, you've, you're going to reach things you never would have reached. Like we can grow in, and you can continue to pursue acceleration too. Like we can see the more, and one of the reasons we see the more is through the acceleration, but it's interesting that it, it basically creates the new more at the end than it does so much at the beginning. Because like whatever you can walk into next, you probably would have gotten to. Later, it's great to pull it forward, but there's still a reality of, of the time. And so this transition is functionally a transition of seasons. I think about seasons a lot in the spiritual sense. Um, and it is. It is a season change. And it's a season change for you. It's a season change in the big picture. Think about natural seasons. So, and I'm literally talking like spring, summer, fall, winter, you know, the, the natural seasons. Um, how do you know when a season has changed or is changing? Looks different? Feels different? How so? What's that? The calendar says so. The calendar says so? There's validity to that, actually. <laughs> Even in a spiritual sense. Yeah, changes to the earth and atmosphere, right? So like in the spr- uh, spring and fall, like you might know it by wind uh, or fresh leaves or the turning of the leaves, right? Like we can definitely see it around us. This is a season change, especially if you're not continuing um, in the third year, maybe even if so. Uh, I don't know what it looks like to be in third year, so I can't speak there. But uh, there, there's a season change, and that's not an optional thing. Like, it's not a choice. I'm just being honest. When you change the structure of what you do and the structure around you and the calendar has changed, um, there's a season change. You have a season change, and you have a choice. You can embrace that change for what it is, or you can fight it. Just just saying. And don't compare the seasons. Can I say that? Don't compare the seasons. Like just accept the seasons for what they are. You can long for, for something of a different type, but it tends to make us focused on something other than the present. And God has something in the coming season for each one of you. I'm confident of that. Right? God has something specific for you in the coming season. And if we get, if we long, oh, school was so great, I'm really disappointed it's over. Like it's easy to get caught in a place of what was, and in fact the enemy would love to try to convince you to dwell there. Or, oh, this is, because it might be. For, for me, the last year has in many ways been sort of a wilderness type season still. And so it's really easy to look forward and say, well, I... Everything will be better later. I'm looking forward to the future relation, you know, season, but this season sort of sucks. And yeah, I'll miss what's in the current season. And we don't want to do that. And, and worse yet, we miss God because God lives in the present. He doesn't live in yesterday's season. He doesn't live in tomorrow's season. He's now. And so, to, and to that end, if we're staying in relationship with him, we sort of get focused on the current season. Like, it's hard to be in the wrong place if, we've, if the relationship with him is connected. So that's a good thing. With that, season changes bring some other things with it. Like, it just forces us to adapt. Like, changes in, in your wardrobe, changes in clothes, right? Like, I'm probably going to be really uncomfortable if I try to wear, you know, shorts in January most of the time. Like, why is it for wearing my big puffy down coat in July? I'm probably going to regret that. No doubt I'm going to regret that. Um, so, so expect a change, right? It's not just, it may not even be just school. It may not just be the fact that your schedule looks different on Sunday and you can actually go home and take a nap. That's awesome. Highly recommended. Um, but, like, there may be other changes that God brings with this. Like, just be, be expected for that. Um, that other things sort of come with it. He may call you into a new place. He may be winding something else down. There may be something in your life he's going to say, okay, not only is, is, are we changing things in school, but maybe there's something else to let go of. Or not only is, is school done, but there's something new to pick up. Just be prepared for it. Uh, and don't be surprised. Don't be surprised at the change. 
especially in the context of the bigger picture, right? God's, God's doing some amazing things on the earth in our time right now, right? Um, and and the prophetic, some of the prophetic words I'm hearing is, is some of that's like this year, kind of, like 2017 kind of this year, like soon, next eight months, God's, God's going to begin to do some things and, and doing some things in, in the context of this coming wave of revival and harvest and everything else. This is one of the fundamental reasons why I'm pretty sure that life after year two for me has to look a little different. Or Well, yeah, what looked like for, for me in my class looks different from what's going to look like for your class. Because the, the big picture season of what God's doing on the earth is now not what it was a year ago. And you've gone through the school and, and your schedule and your time and the reason you are in this class is for this time. There's a purpose for that. God has it structured. You didn't end up in this class on this rotation from late 2015 to early 2017 by accident. You didn't end up in the year before. You didn't end up in the year after. On purpose, like God's got it aligned and and you're here for a time and and there's a specific timing and purpose. Even if you can't figure out what it looks like two months from now, even if you feel a little lost two months from now, you're still on schedule. And again, the enemy may run that, oh, you got ahead of yourself, you didn't do it. Again, it's just crap. Just stupid lies. But that's not reality. It's just not reality. That's fun. Um, my, sense, my sense in what's coming is, is it, it, and it's a way to sum it up is this mighty wind, this mighty move of God. And I feel like the Lord has said that it's going to be all hands on deck. But I want to provide a, a qualify, not qualify in a sense of all hands on deck, but I still want to provide a context for that because my sense is that all hands on deck is still not necessarily the fullness of destiny for each one of us. And I can anticipate another lie coming out of that. Oh, you, you're not connected with your destiny and all this big move, you've missed it. And you haven't. And there's, there's this reality that things still come in. And, and the next move is a big move. It's a long-running move. What God's ushering into the planet is going to exceed every one of our lifetimes. This is not a short couple-year revival that's, that's brewing. This is a big move of God. It's an epic season change. I assume you all probably... Heard Chris Vallotton talk about epic seasons. That's what I mean. That's the context. But, but not in the of our destinies in the expression of that right away, even if all the rest of this is manifesting shortly. The other word, and I'm just going to throw this out there because I don't have a whole lot uh, on this, but I just also sense from the Lord, like, in, the, in what he's doing in this coming move is to expect the unexpected. And I feel like we're going to see more of that, if, more of what he wants to do if we're prepared that way. So I'm even taking that as a challenge for myself. To like just to expect things to be unexpected, out of the ordinary, to, to basically expect them to be out of a framework. And for me, I'm a little bit of a thinky kind of guy, right? So it's real easy to want to understand it, and especially to come, oh, I studied all this stuff for two years in school. I should understand how it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. Nah, no, no, no. Um, so, I mean, again, that may be a reminder as much for me as, as any of us, but it's still there. It's also okay with, with everything that's coming on, this idea of all hands on deck, it's okay to be busy with what's going on, even if it's not fully aligned with your destiny. Like, obviously in context with relation with the Lord, like, be involved. You don't have to go, well, this isn't my thing yet. I'm going to just st- step out and wait. Again, it's going to be a temptation, but that's one we don't necessarily want to yield to. Unless the Lord is, of course, saying, wait, of course. But I, I, we all want to default there. We actually want to default saying, well, we're going to be involved, even if it's not the fullness of everything, because there's still part of the journey. We're on this journey toward the culmination and ultimately just increased relationship and intimacy with the Lord, but also fullness into our destinies and, and where we're going. Um, <laughs> And so to that end also, remember, take time out to, to remember the prophetic words that have been spoken over you through others, to remember what the Lord has spoken to you. It's, it's really good, and it's, especially if you haven't done it for a while, which you 
very likely haven't, who has time in the midst of ev everything else with, with school. But uh, it, it may be worth it to, to plan a time somewhere in the summer and say, hey, let's come back and let me just remind myself of what the Lord has said, because what he has said is a promise, and he's going to make that happen. And so especially if you're feeling discouraged, down, whatever, like I'm just saying, let's remember these things. He spoke it, and his words have power, right? We know this. We know that those words have power. It may even be worth not just reading them, but reading them aloud back to yourself. Give them utterance again to let that power run. And so the, the whole goal is, is his presence, right? It's not seasons. It's not getting through the seasons. It's not navigating the seasons just perfectly. The goal isn't destinies and reaching a certain target and destination. That's all a destiny is anyway. Like we sort of mystify that word sometimes. Ooh, it's a destiny. It's a destination. It's where we're going. <laughs> it's really not super complicated. But at least I have felt like it, it seemed that way before. It's like this mysterious, ethereal, elusive thing. Ooh, destiny. And it really isn't. It's just, it's just a destination. It's the, it's the target. It's the goal of the fullness of what God has for us. I think that's the, mostly what I want to say in all that. Um, we're going to move to a little bit of a, a panel type thing and discussion, a little bit of some of the specifics of our journeys. Before we jump straight to that, is there anything I have said or anybody wants clarification on anything specific I've mentioned, talked about, or so on? There may not be, but I'll throw a chance. You should meet him. He's he's really he's really a great guy. Thomas, can you help him with that? His email is Jesus at heaven dot <laughs> at Gmail, is it? Uh, got them all, right on. You can get to him anywhere. That's that's good that's good news right there. You can get to him anywhere. All right. Um then let's, let's do that. Let Brad and Miles come up here and join me. And you can absolutely. Thanks. So I, I've sort of seeded a, a couple starter questions for, for us to run from, and, and then, you know, we actually probably will have time to, to sort of further continue from there. And if there's something you sort of want to throw our way to say, hey, what does this look like, um, then we can, we can sort of do that. But um, I'll let one of you answer this, and you can decide which of you. Um, has it been harder or easier after second year than expected, and why? Uh, for me, it's it's been um, much harder because of my work situation. Um, things have been just incredibly intense at work so um, I discovered I didn't realize this but I'm actually over uh, 500 million dollars in product being delivered and responsible for the quality of that and I hadn't put two and two together but it's been uh, just crazy um, you know 14 hour days and that kind of thing so um, my season has looked different than going into ministry um, and I, I didn't really anticipate that, but, um, you know, in the midst of it, I find the things that were built into me during my two years of school just coming out, you know, the ways of thinking uh, and conversations. Uh, I've, I've got a, um, just an unsinkable understanding of Daddy's goodness 
in the midst of whatever's going on. And uh, things can get really intense at work. Um, we, we tend to be very passionate about what we do, and uh, there's, you know, almost fights that break out and various things happening. Um, and, and in the midst of that, you know, I'm just, I'm so grateful for what was built into me over two years because it's, it's definitely having a good effect, so. Can I ask you a question on that? Absolutely. Uh, okay, so what uh, what you're asking is, in terms of ministry, is there less than I anticipated, or? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Um, so, it and I, honestly, I have a lot to say about that, and it's not related to your initial question, but that's okay. Go so, for it. So, um, when we first came into uh, my class, when we started first year, you know, we had the, the blue sky dream and everyone was dreaming big. And my thought pattern with that was, okay, you know, if, if I had $200 million drop on me, you know, what would I do on the earth? And I had all these grand thoughts and um, I, I had to kind of part ways with that. I mean, my, my desire is to see an army of heart healers raised up in the earth. I, I want to see people that have been healed go heal others and, and, and lead them to do the same thing, where it's just like a fire that, that spreads throughout the earth. But what I had to, to part ways with was my um, what if $200 million dropped on me type thing. And where I've gone with that since leaving second year is there's a direction that I want to move. And, and that direction is towards um, developing my anointing and helping to transmit that to others. So what I've done in terms of ministry, um, I took an internship with Smash, and I've been every Tuesday night, you know, ministering Smash meetings. And my goal with that was to get up again next to other people's anointings and just draw from you know what God's done in them and continue to move in the direction that I know I'm built for. And um, you know, previously I was like, okay, how would I organize all this? How would we do all this? And now it's like, just go heal a heart. You know, whether it's at work or whether it's here at Smash or whatever, get next to people that love to heal hearts. You know, draw on their anointing, learn from what they're doing. And I'm doing that, and it's like, you know, the ship's moving. So when the ship's moving, it can be steered. So it's not like I've, I've launched out into a, a major ministry or anything like that, but I'm going the direction I was built for. And, and that's okay. I'm, I'm all right, um, you know, being an airplane inspector and being a heart healer. And, you know, all those things are starting to merge now, and it, it feels really good. So feel, it feels like I'm in the right zone. Does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> Let's throw this one at Miles. Next one? Yeah, I'm going to throw the next one at. Did you have expectations following school? Were they met or unmet? <sighs> and how did you respond? All right. Expectations following school. No, um, I don't think I really did, honestly. I... Uh, about beginning second year and pretty much until the last day that I was in second year, I really had no idea what exactly I was supposed to do. I had like this like dream that I felt like the Lord put on my heart that I wanted to like start coming up with a plan for, but it just seemed so unrealistic. I got super discouraged and um, was kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing. And at the same time, I was graduating from Liberty University and um, I knew I was called to ministry. So I was like, I'm just going to apply at, you know, I like kids. You know, so we'll just apply it. Youth, youth stuff, I'm good at that. I can do that, and we'll see how that goes. So I didn't really have expectations. I was kind of just like anything, you know, like, Lord, what? I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. I don't really feel a calling. What does it feel like? You know, what does a calling feel like? Is it sharp? Is it fuzzy? I don't really know, you know? Um, so, no, yeah, I def my expectations weren't met or unmet. They were kind of non-existent. Boom. <laughs> 
I want to sort of, and I'll share from, from my journey in, in opposite. Um, I don't know that I had a lot of real concrete things, but I had this vague expectation, this sort of generalized thing, like everything was going to sort of like blow up and be amazing. It was, hmm. I don't know what it, what, exactly, but I expected like everything was going to change. I'm going to be in my inheritance like super fast. Everything's going to just sort of happen. Like this thing was lurking. Like, so I had this, this expectation like, well, I've, I've, I've done my time. I've been through this journey of school and I expect, things, I expect something to come of it. Like I expect this investment to pay off and I expect it to pay off quick. And it hasn't been the case. I hinted at earlier, I've, I've, if anything, been on a wilderness season. If anything, if I'm really honest and I look back at my year of the, of the last year and honestly going further back, going well into second year, Nothing in my life, in, in the natural, has really worked too well. Nothing much has worked well. I've got a business that hasn't worked well. I've got some other things that haven't worked well. A lot of other things I'm asking the Lord, like, why? What's the deal? And yet, it's okay. And that's been one of the interesting things, is say, no, God's good anyway. And it's okay. And I'm actually learning to live in this place where I can say, God is good, and he's good enough that all the rest of this can actually be sort of a mess. And as long as I don't dwell there, I'm fine. In essence, it's been another season of a journey. It's, it's, it didn't stop. I said that earlier. This is a journey. And, and even to that end, our learning and our growth doesn't stop at the end of, doesn't stop with graduation unless you just choose to. Anyway. I'll let either one of you choose this. I may even let you both answer it. Um, at the time of, of graduation, so May of last year, uh, if someone could have told you one thing about what was to come in the in the in the coming year, uh, what would it have been? One thing that would have you you would have loved to have heard. You want to go first? We can both answer. I think we should both answer. Powerball numbers <laughs> when it reached <laughs> six hundred mil. Touche. <laughs> about like the next season and like what life was going to be like. Yeah, one just thing anything that would be in helpful. general. If okay. you're sitting in their seats, ultimately, what would you? Oh, what would I? What, what would I? T- what would I want someone to have told what me? What would you like Clark? to have heard a year ago? Um, yeah, I wish somebody would have told me way in advance, or maybe they did say it, and I'm just kind of stubborn and hard-headed and didn't get it. But that it's really not, you know, this whole Christian life thing isn't as much about what we do for God, but about how God loves us and wants to do things for us. And every every calling and thing thing that He's put on your heart and prophetic word that you've received is not up to you to fulfill. It's something that he wants to partner with you. It's a dream of his that he wants to share with you. And it's not so much about what we do as much as it is what he does. And so you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself. Because, oh, is this better? Thank you, thank you. Is this better? Is this better, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, so does I repeat it? The whole thing? If you choose, otherwise God will part it. It'll, boom. Double. Double it, Lord. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, I wish that somebody would have told me, or they probably probably did. I'm sure they did, you know. But um, that it's not as much about us as it is about God. He's just a good dad that wants to do things for us, and the dreams and prophecies and things that he's spoken over your life and about you, he's not expecting you to fulfill. They're, they're dreams that he wants to share with you and do them with you, and so you can take all the pressure off yourself that it's not about you working and striving really hard to get things done and to uh, make sure you don't miss every open door or whatever nonsense. He's totally God. You know, he created the entire universe and we're a little speck on this little rock in this huge universe. And yet when you say Abba, he's instantly right there. He knows you in and out. He's going to take care of you. And I wish that that's what I would have known. Because I've been like, since I've gotten out of school, the Lord has been teaching me a lot like about grace, you know. Um, I watched a Martin Luther documentary that just completely shifted my view on like a basic truth, but that's changing my Christian experience. Like that everything is finished for us. We walk in inheritance. We walk in power. We walk in all of that now. So we don't need to, it, it's not about the next man of God coming to town and laying hand on you so you can walk in your destiny. That's, I don't know what that is. It's weird. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's idolatry. Yeah, absolutely. It's not about that. I don't care if it's Bill Johnson. It's, it's about Jesus lives on the inside of you, Right. And it's, it's a finished work. If it's finished, then he's, he's pulled out that little stool for you to sit at the table and eat. And I think it pleases God more when we let him love us and open doors for us and take care of us than when we try to do it ourselves. 
And I wish that someone would have told me that because I spent a lot of a lot of my Christian walk in general striving and trying to perform right and get it right and dot my I's and cross my T's just to come to find out that God's more interested in just me trusting him honestly and openly with my life and um, letting him be my dad. Like the revelation of God being father is a really big deal. So, boom. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot to add to that um, other than... It's <laughs> pretty good. Um, you know, we, we learned some really powerful things here in terms of prophecy and, um, you know, praying for healing for people and, and things that are amazing that we want to be releasing. But um, a, a revelation that I didn't necessarily get in school, uh, maybe it was there, but I just missed it, is... I, honestly, I believe the most powerful spiritual gift, hands down, is hospitality. Is sitting across a table with somebody and just doing life together. I, I think that, that everything the Lord wants to get to us, he gets to us in community. And that, for me, is, is something that, you know, since school I've really been kind of meditating on. That, you know, we're looking for these powerful experiences and they're great and I love them. But in reality the things that really heal our hearts and the things that really move us towards our destination um, are those times with, with brothers and sisters and family and, and letting God love us through others. And I really honor you, especially in your heart, for that kind of ministry because it's so much of how you're wired, like to just sit with people and carry that kind of relationship. So I honor that in you uh, because of, of how important that is. And in fact, I will remind all of us, because some of you are maybe wired more that way, because we do sometimes get attention to the big power stuff, the showy stuff. And yet, God gave those giftings, because we need those. And so, and it's maybe even more timely to remember right now than anything with what God's in the process, this mighty wind that he's getting ready to, to blow in with, is to remember that there's going to be a lot of amazing stuff. And there's, I mean, I've heard prophecies of ways of healing and ways of prophecy and ways of even signs and wonders beyond healing. And all of it's going to be really amazing and showy. And God has a purpose in that. It's good, but it's ultimately, he's after hearts. He's after hearts. And wherever that sits, and, and honestly, once God has shown his power, a whole lot of people in their hearts are going to respond. And there's a whole lot of people that need a whole lot of heart healing. So we just bless you. Um, and, and how much you carry in that and how much you're going to equip others to carry that same heart and to multiply. Thank you. <laughs> Do either one of you have anything you want to add in a sense of what you've learned or your journey? In the sense of, of that even from graduation a year ago, like we've, we've continued to learn and grow, Right? I mean, Miles said on a couple of things already, but if either one of you have anything else you want to share about, like what you've been learning or the kinds of things or, or anything else, anything out of that. You don't have to. I just throw it out there. Um, I, I didn't necessarily see um, graduation or continuation or whatever we call it from school as a uh, something ending and something beginning. Um, I, I tend to see things as a continuum, and uh, the thing that was really built into me in school was that it is absolutely okay for me to look just like myself and not have to be somebody else, and uh, that was so freeing in school. The fact that, um, you know, if, if I admire Nathan's music and, like, man, I, I can't do that on the guitar or whatever it looks like, um, I, I just, in school, I, I became so comfortable just living in my own skin, and that's only increased since getting out, and that's something that I hope all of you have had built into you, because it's such a good thing um, to, to just walk in that, you know. The, the world needs coral fully filled with the Holy Spirit, you know. I mean, the world needs coral... Carolyn, fully filled with the Holy Spirit, and not anybody else but who you are. Um, another thing that was built into me in school that I so appreciate was an apostolic mindset, and that is that our 
leadership structure is fathers and mothers, um, you know, leading sons and daughters. It's not corporate model. It's not, you know, power model or I'm going to lord over you or any of that. And um, that and, and losing the religious spirit have so helped me since graduating. You know, I'm, I'm in these situations and conversations and that kind of thing. And it's just like it, it's in me now. You know, I know that I don't have to respond in a religious way. It doesn't even want to pop out of me. It's like, wow, something changed over the last two years, and it's so good to just walk in that. You know, it, I, I just feel the freedom of that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to think on, like, one thing to say. <laughs> That's really hard. Um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I would say, first and foremost, identity is essential. If there's one thing that you get out of this whole school, let it be identity. Get rooted and grounded in who you are in Christ. Um, it's really easy to look at our experience and our failures and our mistakes and look at the Bible and see how it doesn't line up and then try to go get inner healing or something to fix something in us. I'm not against inner healing, but maybe it's not it. Maybe it's just we need to walk in the reality of who we are. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just say you won the Stanley Cup, right? You won the Stanley Cup. I don't know. Who watches hockey? Nobody. I don't even watch hockey. But <laughs> let's just say you won the Stanley Cup, right? And the very next day you wake up and you feel like depressed for whatever reason. You're like, I don't feel like a winner. You know what I mean? It doesn't change the fact that you won, right? And the victory that we have is in Christ. And Christ won that victory. And we are to live a victorious life. It's based on what he did, not what we do. And our identity is in Christ. We've been plucked out of Adam, put in Jesus. So I would say like, it's essential that we, we get our identity and that we learn that we're connected to him. And uh, there's a verse that Thomas shared in our legacy group today that is like my life verse right now. First 17, I'm sorry, first, first John 4.17. As he is, so are we in this world talking about Jesus. You know, like that's a powerful, powerful verse, you know. Like as Christ is seated in glory right now, that's exactly how you are right now on this earth, you know. And so getting really rooted and grounded in identity, I think, is essential. Because it doesn't matter, you know, what ministry you're in or what, what you're doing with your life after, after this. If you don't know who you are, you're going to be striving and struggling and trying to get and beg and plead with God for breakthrough or something when he's already given you that in Christ. Does that make sense? So I think I would say that it's essential that you learn identity. And uh, that's that. That's what I would say. That's what's been the most, like, powerful truth for me. Um, since coming out of the school is that, first of all, what the Bible says about us is actually true. It's not saying what you could be. It's saying who you are. You know, it's not, it's not an invitation. It's, not, it's, it's who you are. When it says that you are something or you have something, you actually have it and you are it, you know? And then just accepting that as true has just changed my life. Um, rest has also changed it. Resting in sonship or identity has been really good. I went to a New Age fair. And there was this woman with a blue thing on her, like, elbow. Like, she had something wrong with her elbow. And me and my friend walked up to her, and I was like, hey, what happened to your elbow? And she was sitting in line waiting for this. Uh, I guess she was going to get some chiropractic work done. I was like, so, hey, what's, what happened to your arm? And she's like, oh, I hurt it doing something. And I was like, does it hurt? And she goes, yeah, it hurts really bad, but I'm, I'm about to go over there. And I looked over, and I see this, like, like ripped, like, ripped, like, 69-year-old woman <laughs> grabbing this, this dude's arm and, like, yanking it. And he's like, Ugh! you know what I mean? And I was like... Ah, that looks fun, you know? And um, I was like, oh, well, hey, you know, can we just pray for you really quick? And she was like, oh, no, thanks. We're just going to, I'm just going to go and do this thing. And uh, my friend was like, well, we just bless you and, and your body and stuff like that. And then I just felt the Lord say, just us standing there, the pain in her arm was, was going away or, or had gone away. And I was like, hey, could you just move your arm for me? I just believe, you know, it's better. And she started to move it. And she's like, well, it still hurts right there. And like pointed to this little spot, and I just, in Jesus' name, be healed. Now move it again. And she's like, it's all gone. And I was like, well, praise God. But the, the, the lesson I got from that is people get healed without you having to lay hands on them when you're at rest in who you are. Because it's not as much about the words you say or your hands laid on them. When we're, when we're not trying and striving to do it, we're not in the flesh. The flesh blocks the flow. When we just are at rest in our identity, who we are and what he's done, it just flows naturally, and people are accidentally getting healed around you. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's it. That's what I would say. Definitely identity and learning to rest in it. And, and accept the Bible as truth. When it says you are or have something, you've got it. Don't wrestle with it. Just believe. That's good stuff, right? 
I feel like rest has been a big thing for me too. Um, just being okay with, with, with where I'm at and what God's doing and just let the journey be the journey. Uh, and just so much recognizing it's not me, it's not dependent on me. I have to trust that God is capable of moving. He's more capable of moving than my unbelief is in stopping him. He's more capable in speaking clearly to me than I am in confusing and twisting whatever he might be saying. Like it's just sort of been this, I mean, it's resting in and being confident also in just his bigness, his sovereignty, his ability to be greater than any of my issues, even lingering issues. I would say too that for me, the time, this time, this sort of third year, is in a sense, I almost call it a third year of, of sorts for me because it is so much the ongoing, continuing journey of learning. And it, it's sort of just more like being on independent study. You just, like, you sort of begin to dive into things. And, like, I found myself just, and I, as I was thinking about it a little bit, uh, even this last week in, in prep for today, I was realizing, like, there have just been some themes. Like, if I go look through... I read a lot, so if I look through my stack of books and look at some of the themes, I can sort of see some of where the independent study has, where it has been. And, it, and it, they, they make sense. Like, they're related. They're more related to calling and destiny than some of the generalized stuff maybe we did over two years. Not that that's wrong. That was a necessary foundation. I needed that stuff. But now we get to get a little bit more focused, a little bit more individual in ways that... Honestly, this school at this time and this size maybe can't do. Like, we don't have a whole lot of different tracks for everybody with different callings, different giftings or whatever, right? It's just not, not where we're at. And that's quite okay. Like, the Lord's more than capable. It's not a problem. And so the journey has just gone on, whereas, you know, I've been studying issues related to creativity and studying things related to um, apostolic governance and just some other random topics that... Honestly, at the time, some of them, like, some of it wasn't even that formal. It wasn't really like, oh, I think this is it, and I need to read some of this stuff. It was like, oh, I'm just going to pick that up. In fact, I started on the creativity book after school, and thinking like, oh, at least this stuff isn't all that other stuff. Like, I was just, I was tired in a good way, but I was still tired. Like, I don't want to read a whole lot of Christian books right now. I just want something else, like anything else, really. <laughs> and and it, that just was a season. It was a short one. Like it was about the summer. By fall, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for some more of this other meaty stuff. But I was just looking for some more casual stuff. And, oh, I'm going to read some stuff about creativity. That sounds fun. Uh, and yet it turns out it's been a recurring theme all year where it's turned into like six or eight books on that alone just because that's obviously something that God's stirring in my life uh, and stirring, there's a need to be studying this. I don't even know what all of it is yet. I just know it's there because that's what God's doing. Um, any other any questions anything else anybody else wants to, to throw at us we got a couple probably sort of quick but uh, got a couple minutes we're still going to try to do some kind of importation activation thing so be thinking gentlemen yes sir so I don't need to hear about everyone else but how does God want me to prioritize my time <laughs> I want you to prioritize your time. Um. <laughs> Miles doesn't got it. You have to wake up and do things every day. Otherwise, you don't get love. That's right. Yeah. Performance, performance, performance. Anybody else? For me, absolutely. Not even a question. Looking at what was seeded into my life and what has shifted and what became established. You know, first year for me, was, it, was, it was a very tight cause and effect. You know, we're going after these things and I'm seeing this change in my life. We're going after a certain strongholds in my mind and then, like, my mind is quieter the next week. Yeah. You know, we, like, there, was, there were very tangible, very tightly correlated things that made sense to me. Second year didn't feel that way to me at all. Like, you're going through second year and I'm going like, this is all great, and I don't know, like I couldn't draw a correlation, but I got to the end and I felt much more rooted and established. Like a lot of things had, had taken a much deeper root, and yet I didn't have any idea how I got there. It just had happened. It's still really good news. It happened. That's really the important part. And I feel like for me, this ongoing year has even been more that same. Like I feel much more established today than I did a year ago. And yet, 
there's no formality to it at all. It's just the ongoing, ongoing life and relationship with God more than anything. But yeah, absolutely, I would. When you mentioned that summer, the, the summer we just got out of Oh, yeah. But it's like we've had a lot of, uh, it's like I'm, I believe I'm a flower or a plant and a lot of food and water poured on us and sunshine. I now need to process, absorb, and that's what I'm looking forward to a summer just to soak and not feel I don't have the schedule. So, Absolutely. And, and I. Yeah, and let, let me, and to anybody else, like, absolutely, you have permission for that. Yeah. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the same thing. I needed it just to, to soak in and have its own time. And I needed to go, and it's to spend my, my conscious effort somewhere else, knowing that the Lord's still at work. Um, but absolutely, and there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. And it doesn't have to be merely a summer if it needs to be longer. For me, it was... It was about probably three months before I wanted to touch anything else, and even then it was sort of a ramp up a little bit. But it might look, it might look different for you. You might need a year, I don't know, or somebody might. It doesn't, it's fine. Like the Lord knows how you're wired. He is not surprised by how you're wired. You might be surprised at how you're wired at times. He is not. He is totally good with it. And I guarantee in the scheduling and time and the plans, he's allotted, allotted for that, right? I mean, it's entirely possible that there are certain things, even that, that kind of thing, that the reason you're maybe in this class and not another is because he's allowing for soaking time, processing time, whatever else. Like, he's, he's on it. I just want to add anything else to those? Uh, I agree with what Tom said. I would have taken two years again. Um, that being said, it, it had a cost. Um, I invested heavily during those two years in my oldest son, Aaron, and I'm really grateful for that. But my daughter paid the price with me being gone a lot. And what I'm realizing about this next season is that it's going to be a laser-focused time of um, preparing them to release into adulthood. And, you know, with, with ceremony and with, with preparation leading up to that and um, those kind of things. And, and I've had to say no to some things knowing that that is my next season. So I'm really grateful for the two years I would have done it again, but now it's time to get really serious about, you know, some, some areas where um, I, I didn't invest as much time while I was in school because I couldn't. Yes, I would have done them both again. I would have done first year um, as me and second year as Tom. That's how I would do it if I could do it again. <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> Can I ask you guys a question? Are any of you guys worried about this upcoming season and graduating and what you're going to do? Or what are your thoughts? How, are, where, how do you feel about graduation and what's to come after that the next season? Excited? Move on. I said I feel like Miles kind of shared a um, lot of expectations and yet none because I feel stirred in so many things and I feel like a lot of things that God's spoken to me in this journey, I'm seeing them like come t coming together but not quite taking form yet so I'm still kind of just waiting for that coming into a form and really kind of trying to step out and pursue anything that's stirring in my heart like just taking a step in that direction or several steps in all the different directions and kind of letting God working with God and figuring out which things need to take form at which time moving from this period of time you know because it might be another if I look at the two-year journey of school then I look at maybe the next two years and say how will all these things come together that next two years might be a season of a number of things that were stirred in this two years so I don't know that's and, how I'm and feeling. beyond yeah totally and beyond absolutely whoever said it before um, I just really feel like I'm gonna go into 
uh, a strong continuation with also um, a lot of movement to it because a lot of the things that I have done, especially this year, um, you know, partly worship but not so much on that, uh, but like playing for healing room and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and also, you know, doing, um, you know, speaking presentations and, and that kind of thing um, are going to be not so much inside the walls, inside a school, inside this church. I believe that what is coming for me is, feels like it's going to be moving toward more like 75% outside the walls. What's up? Oh, hold on. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no, seriously. Just take, just take, take it. I got it. Take it from real quick. What do you all want to do? In terms of your part. There we go. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we still want to do a little bit of a uh, some kind of thing. We just want to sort of pray over y'all. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sort of go around and just sort of to pray individually. And and I think we're technically at time, I guess now. But so you know you can linger and you may get more than one of us to come around, or you can take off and do whatever else you need to do, grab a snack or whatever. So I'm just gonna honor that. But we're just gonna sort of go around and just pray. Very well.